decided to bring music back. Death Threat is back. It's Friday. <laughs> I just like to listen to it. I just like that whole vibe. I just like that whole vibe. I just like that whole vibe. It's my Hey. Baseball season. Yeah, baseball, man. Baseball. Baseball. America's game. Three o'clock. Long stadium. Hey, this is uh, Travis. Looking at Pat Jenkins. Pig Pen Show with Pat and Travis. Uh, we're at Forest Nest Barbecue. No. We've got some things to talk about. we got a big game today. Baseball season starts at 3 o'clock. Uh, versus Villanova. We actually have some of the Villanova players in Boar's Nest right now. Uh, enjoying some of the good food. Uh, we've got some other things to talk about before we get to baseball. The biggest story is uh, Devontae Neal. He signs uh, Tuesday. Uh, message boards have been lit up with he's going to Arizona. It's going to be another one of these home home state kid visits his home state school in the final weekend. He gets pulled away. What do you think? I think I, I would think the kid knows for sure. I think he may have an idea, but for 100 definite. Um, I bet you, I bet if you ask Devontae and his father uh, right at this moment, do they know where he's going to go? I'm pretty sure they're still in discussion. Uh, like, you know, you, you here at Notre Dame, you here at uh, Arizona. Uh, but I really think you know, we'll find out Tuesday. Uh, I think all four of those schools are legitimately in the hunt for Devontae. Uh, and as I've said before on the Big Pin Show, um, whoever gets Devontae, you can get a special football player, uh, an even better person. So, uh, you know, with all the speculation that goes on with these 17 and 18 year old kids, let's let this kid tell the world. And, uh, you know, con and you'll contact the other three schools that aren't fortunate enough to get his signature. Uh, on Monday night, uh, he'll tell everybody on Tuesday. Well, you know, Pat, so much more goes into deciding, a kid deciding on where to go to school. You know, just the, the name on a degree, early play at time, how far away from home is it? Uh, is the kid a mama's boy? You know, is his mama going to miss him if he's more than 100 miles away? Uh, does he have a girlfriend that he's madly in love with in high school? What school is she going to? Uh, you know, that, 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 right, great, that reason right there greatly affected my school of choice when I, when I decided to play where I played. Uh, you know, I, I had offers from UCLA and Army and, and uh, you know, chose to stay home because my girlfriend wanted me to. And, there's so many things that go into a kid's decision. So many more, you know, things that we don't read about in the newspaper or, or they don't tell you know, regular reporters and stuff like that. I, I agree with you. I think, you know, I think it's all, you're, you're talking about it, making a decision that's going to change your life as a four. You know, sometimes five year commitment. Uh, you sit down and put pen to paper and cash it out with that's going to be in whatever sport football, basketball, track, swimming, gymnastics, volleyball, whatever sport it is. It's, it's the, at, at the time in your life, you're a senior in high school. This, if you're fortunate enough and blessed enough to be awarded an athletic scholarship, it's the biggest decision that you will make to date in your life. You know, I just I want every Everybody, you know, just understand that whatever this kid decides, it's, it's, it's in the best interest for he and his family. And I myself personally, I don't think Devontae's going to go to Arizona. I think he's going to either go to Notre Dame or Arkansas, you know, one of those schools. Because I think, you know, if you look at the future of you know, where those programs will be in, in his short period of time, because I see him being a three and out kid, uh, he's that good. Uh, I don't think he's going to be red shirt next year at whatever school he is. Uh, just you know, supporting. Uh, I don't so many times in recruiting you'll see a bunch of bashing of kids such as DDB was kind of bashed throughout the country uh, by Oklahoma and some Arkansas fans. I mean, you know, when he didn't choose their school, I mean, these are the, this is the, the kid's decision and we've all got to understand that this, this is going to make him happy. Neither myself nor you, Travis, or any other uh, avid fan that covered recruiting has to go to school for these kids. So let's just, let's be able to put all this in perspective and let this kid tell everyone on Tuesday uh, his final decision. Well, you know, we've all got to remember that these are just 18, 17, 18 year old kids. They have a hard time deciding what kind of cereal they want to eat in the morning. So, uh, you know, I, I, heard, I read something great yesterday. 
on uh, on our discussions forum. Uh, you know, if a kid wants to choose to play in the Sun Belt Conference versus the SEC, let him go. He belongs in the Sun Belt. He doesn't belong in the SEC, and, and that's that's true. If you want to play for you know a school in a lesser conference or an unaffiliated school or a Sun Belt conference team, and uh, knock yourself out. I mean, have fun. Hope you do well. Uh, adios. I mean, it, he, he, I've said this a million times, and I'll say it a million and one. I would take eleven kids that bleed Arkansas Razorback blood uh, over five stars that have a hard time choosing. That was cool. Any day. Well, we've got uh, gymnastics. Uh, the girls are still top ten in the nation. Uh, they've been on a little bit of a skid. They've lost the last couple, scoring their lowest point totals the last couple times to Oklahoma and, and Georgia, both top ten teams. They've got another top ten opponent in Alabama. That's ranked number six. And they're at Alabama. Uh, they need to end their skid. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 you know you've come a long way when, you know, a two game uh, event skid is considered a, you know, kind of a panic moment. I mean, I know, you know when, you, when you look back at where that gymnastics program has come from where it started, I mean, it's, it's a tribute to Coach Cook and uh, her husband for what they've done. Uh, it's also a tribute to those girls. You know, I think, you know, sometimes your best uh, success comes from adverse situations. And, you know, I think it would be great for the girls to go down to Tuscaloosa against the sixth ring gymnastics team in the, in the nation and, you know, break this kid. But, you know, in Alabama, what better, what better school would you like to end a drought with? But, you know, at the University of Alabama, on their soil, I think these girls are going to be hungry to get back on the, uh, the winning side today. You know, I, I've been to Tuscaloosa and, and uh, you know, nice people uh, make you feel welcome, but for the life of me, I, mean, I cannot figure out why somebody would want to go to Tuscaloosa over Fayetteville. <laughs> <laughs> There's just nothing there. Uh, you know, it, it just, it absolutely boondoggles my mind. But hey, it is what it is, and Alabama's a top program, and, and you know, we're going to wish the girls luck and be tuning in to that Friday night. We've got uh, Lady Razorback basketball news. Uh, the, SEC, <laughs> the SEC streak has been snapped at eight program best, eight game winning streak snapped last night. LSU came to town and stole one of them. And you look at that, and you know, we hate it for the girls, but at, at the same token, uh, you, you have to tip your hat to LSU. Coach Nikki Caldwell, her, her basketball team, they, uh, you know, they made a couple plays there down the stretch in the second half, uh, you know, that really kind of you know, tilted the game in their favor. Uh, you look at what, what you've been getting from with Dominique Robinson and Kelly Byrne, uh, uh, Ashley Daniels, you know, and you know, poor Sarah, Sarah Watkins, what can you say? I mean, she's, she's been in two or three games, two or slump. Uh, you know, the production was not what it had been throughout the eight-game streak. Uh, but, you know, you got to pick yourself up. It's, it's a it's senior day here in Fayetteville for that, that, that senior class of Sierra Ricketts, uh, Lindsey Harris, Ashley Daniels, Tamisha uh, Towns, and those, you know, and I think, you know, as, as a fan base come out, you know, send these girls out the right way. They are going to be in the NCAA tournament, so all is not lost. But you know, you just have to sometimes chip your head. And LSU played the type of basketball that would have allowed them to have a chance in the fourth, in, in the second half, to win that ball game. They slowed it down and uh, really attacked the last. Travis, you and I were comment throughout the game. You know, just how aggressive they were in attacking the glass. Hey, they, they just outplayed us. They outplayed us. They are hustlers. Uh, you know, there's no no two ways around it. They they just flat put it on us. Uh, you know, it's a team we beat at their place by 20 earlier in the year. Uh, you know, a game we should have won, but they came in and they wanted it more. And you could tell they uh, you know they had um, they gave themselves two or three chances to, to to get the rebound and they got it and we did. And they put the, put you know the ball in the hole and that about sums that game. Uh, 
What else we got? We got uh, we're getting the baseball. We got some other stuff to talk about. Uh, Razorback men's basketball tomorrow at five o'clock. Uh, well, Walton Arena once again. Uh, sellout crowd, which is a great tribute to Coach Anderson and those and his staff as well as players, and that you still have the belief in your fans. I know it's going to be a highly, ener you know, energized crowd with uh, the uh, coming back of John Pelfrey as an assistant with the Florida staff. So that's going to give those guys an extra little motivation. If you're Delicious Noble, the Drake's way. Uh, Marvell Wade, Ricky Scott, those, those guys. I think the crowd's going to really uplift this team. Um, you know, I expect them to to win the game because you know they've all they they've been very good at home. You know, with that crowd, it's, it's it, you know, I, I, Aaron, I've always believed at home here, and that's 10 to 15 points right there uh, that that they give you just off their energy. Um, I think they're gonna come out playing inspired brand of basketball and, and kind of get that bad taste out of their mouth. And like you said, uh, it's a raucous crowd is what I'm anticipating. Uh, well, the Pell's back in Bud Walton. First time since he was let go, and <laughs> it should be an exciting game. Just we're undefeated. Imagine the things they're gonna say. <laughs> we're undefeated at home, and we're facing a very tough, very talented Florida team. Um, you know, but we've been here before this year. You know, weren't expecting to come out with a win and, and you know, blew the doors off some people like Michigan and stuff that come down. So, Buck Walton's definitely back to where it was a, you know, a, a, feared, a feared place to play and a fun and exciting atmosphere. And uh, I'm sure the crowd uh, will be into it. Uh, but let's hope that, you know, we stay classy. Which brings me to the uh, kind of topic that you and I talked about off the air. Here in the local paper, there was a uh, few writers, I, I, so to speak, won't name any names, that, you know, it's kind of talked about, you know, Arkansas going to the NIT. Um, you know, my general feeling is the NIT is it's great for this program. It hasn't been in postseason play, but either NCAA or NIT, uh, anything that can get this, this this young basketball team more, more practice time, more games, uh, can only help. You know, I know, you know, if you can remember back when Nolan Richardson first started his journey, uh, we went to the NIT, and you know, the following year, we're in the NCAA tournament, the 1914 team. And, you know, we all know uh, the history of that program after uh, you got those extra games. So uh, I, I, I don't want anyone to look at the NIT as not being a progression from where from where you were last year and, and years past. Pat, I agree. Any, anytime you can get any anytime in athletics, you can get more practice time, uh, you know, more game experience, especially for this young group of kids we have. It, it's a positive. It doesn't matter if it's the NCAA, the NIT, or the National Invitation for the Blind. If you're getting time on the court, it, it's only going to improve your game. And, uh, you know, it's not something we should hang our, our heads about. These kids weren't even picked to, to you know, to break even this year. You know, if, if I think, if I remember right, they were picked in the bottom of the SEC. Uh, so, you know, they haven't won a, a, a game away, but they've won all over at home. They've exceeded expectations, and, and uh, you know, an NIT invitation would be something for them to be proud of and, and uh, take seriously, and would be good for them. Uh, I, I agree. I totally agree. I think if you go twenty and zero at home. You know, that's the 20 win season, and you know, we, there's still two opportunities to you know, get a road win. You know, they still got to go to Auburn, Alabama, they've got to go start with Mississippi, and you know, uh, try to get two. And then you have the, the SEC tournament that you can win a game or two. I mean, you know, let's, let's not just settle for the w, the NIT, it's, it, it's, it'll be great to get postseason, but this team by no means is out of the, the NCAA. No talk. I mean, if anything can happen once you get to turn the time. I still think this team will break and get at least one road win before the season's over. They just got to play a little bit better, Travis. Just you know, play together because I see sometimes you do a little one on one basketball, and, and that's not going to win you games. I mean, you have to be a, a solid chain. You know, every, every link has to be strong together when you're on the road, um, and, and you got to play. Uh, a, a tougher brand in defense. I know Mike preaches that in every every, every practice. I'm, I'm pretty sure um, they just you know make a shot here or there. You know you get that 10 minute mark and you're down 10 points at, in Knoxville Wednesday night. 
and he just can't seem to make that play. You know, their guy comes down and he hits a three, and it's a snowball effect. But, you know, uh, have faith in this young basketball team because, first of all, this is a young basketball team, and they and they are in the you know, times we would see last year, Travis, I'm pretty sure you can agree with me. Uh, you knew this team didn't have a chance. And they'd get down by 20, and would they have fought back to 10, with 10 minutes left? I don't think so. I saw a lot of quickness teams, so, you know, Come out, support Mike, and his his staff, and his players. Because this thing will get turned around, and I've said so many times to friends that I've talked to, you know, beat this team, beat and this coaching staff while you can, because they're going to learn how to win on the road. And if they can continue to, you know, every year protect home like they have this year, they're going to be a tough out. Well, the final thing we're going to talk about today, like I said, we're short on time, so you know, baseball, baby. baseball. Is, you know, I love America's game. You woke up this morning I, thinking I about. It. I, did you grab a baseball bat? I'm what telling you, you I almost took a shower with with my baseball sweater on. <laughs> I, and that's how excited I was. I woke up and, and threw on my, my sweat top, my baseball, Arkansas baseball sweat top, and jumped in the shower. Luckily, I didn't turn the water on before I figured it out. But I'm excited. You know, uh, we're ranked anywhere from number three to number eight, depending on publication. And uh, and uh, so, you know, like I said, we've got some of the Villanova players in, in Boar's Nest right now uh, eating, and they better they better fill their bellies because this is about the best thing they're going to experience this weekend when they play them hogs. And you know the thing I like about this baseball team is uh, the leader, Coach Dave Van Horn, is not shying away from any of the preseason expectations. Uh, he's embracing it. You know, he's kind of like Coach Trino with the football program, Coach Anderson with the basketball program, and all those coaches on that on that campus. They're they're relishing the, the expectation. No one's shying away. Uh, the, the pitching staff is going to be probably one of the best pitching uh, rotation that they've had come through that university Candy. in years. I mean, you know, Maxwell going tonight. Uh, got a lot of great defensive players behind him. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that crowd is going to be charged up because you know this is a preseason top five team. You know, they're starting in the top five and, and playing in the best baseball facility in all of the country. Uh, I'm looking forward to what this team uh, can accomplish and tonight being the start of a very, very special season. Well, the game starts at 3 p.m. We're going to be in the outfield instead of the press box. Uh, you know, hanging out down with, with, uh, with the fans and, and getting some fan reactions and things like that. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. We've got, uh, I've looked the schedule over and the schedule is favorable. So, uh, you know, and like you said, Coach Van Horn, Coach Petrino, Coach Anderson, these are guys that all have the mentality of. of, of hey, uh, sir. Can you get her for me back there? To be the man, you got to beat the man. At the table, can you tell her to come up front? Now, we're going to bring a special guest in here, one of the uh, wait staff here at Boards Nance, who's an avid baseball fan. Um, I think her two greatest loves are Arkansas football and Arkansas baseball. And we're going to have Travis talk to her, kind of get an overview of how she's feeling about the season. Maybe talk about a few specials that they have here at Boards Nance. Maybe. Maybe, if she's willing. I'm going to ask you a couple questions about baseball. She's got uh, Villanova players to play. Yeah, she's taking care of business. And that's the type, and that's the type of you know, um, hospitality that you get here at Boards and that's the staff is so quick to take care of you. And the moment you walk in that door, you feel that this is a family atmosphere. Uh, you feel real comfortable. I know I feel comfortable every time I come in this, in this establishment. Uh, some of the best food in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, so you ever get a chance, you know, you're looking for a great meal. Boys Nest is the place to go to. Hey, they do us right. Those ribs are off the chain. They got some alligator. Pat won't try the alligator. I keep trying to get him to it. I'm going to talk him into it one day. Traditionally, but barbecue. He, Jacob, he's the same hamburgers. pulled beef sandwich every time we come in here. He swears by it. I, I like the ribs. I like the alligator. They're great food. Cajun, Creole, barbecue mix. Um, we also like to thank Janky's USA Computers. Corey Gare down there is a great guy. I'll hit him up if, for all your computer needs. Uh, c and &E Locksmith. Another, another great guy down there. They help you out. 
best rakes in town. Been there a long time. I want to ask you, Travis, what are you looking for? Forward to watching in, in the opener tonight at Baum Stadium with the, the Razorbacks and the Villanova. Well, you know what? It's it's gonna it's supposed to be sixty, which you know I wanted to comment on because when I when I got out of the house this morning, today was supposed to be sixty and sunny, and it's cloudy and about forty five. So I don't know what the what the uh, requirements are oh, I got to be a weatherman in Northwest Arkansas, but they can't be much because they ain't ever right. <laughs> the weather here in Northwest Arkansas. It's, 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 I have no offense, it's just like a, a moment. It changes every day. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, you just hope that it's, well, it's fair enough. Hopefully, you know, it'll warm up, the clouds will clear out, and uh, it'll, it'll hit 55, 60 degrees. And, and what I'm looking forward to is, uh, like, like we said before, we're top five team. Uh, what, what kind of crowd are we going to get to turn out for a 3 o'clock game on opening day on Friday? Uh, I think you'll see a lot of those 9 to 5s take a longer lunch break. <laughs> you know, came in early. So they can take that three o'clock lunch break and maybe knock off. I think you know. I think the crowd will be very excited to see this baseball team. Uh, and wait a few, a, a, quite a few months because you read in baseball America, you read in college baseball, uh, just the expectations. And, and now, just this past week, with the uh, conference coach voting this team to win the SEC West, possibly the SEC overall title. Uh, it only heightens, you know, just the anticipation from this absolute rabbit fan base. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to this. And, and the, you know, the excitement goes, it kind of goes back and roots in, again, coaches like Van Horn and Petrino that, that don't back down from anybody, uh, you, know, you know, relish the fact that, that uh, they have high expectations. Um, and fans love that, you know. That, that, you know, we've, we've had coaches in the past before and some of the sports that, that uh, you know, downplay high expectations, and you know, sometimes I feel like that even wears off on the players. And if the coach, the head, the head ball man, doesn't have high expectations, I don't know. I'm not real sure your players do either. And uh, you know, but these guys are are uh, talented. They expect to win. They got a, an issue with the uh, catcher position, but I think we're going to be all right. We've got two guys. Jake Wise and uh, uh, the other kid I can't think of right now, but uh, you know, it, <laughs> there's so many. Yeah, deep, yeah, deep. <laughs> Plethora of talent. And on the recruiting note, um, at, at last our last time we were on there on Wednesday, Austin Haller, a uh, quarterback, six two, about two hundred ten, two hundred fifty pounds, Fayetteville High School, um, had been recently off two new offers in Vanderbilt and uh, Memphis. Memphis have just uh, thrown their hat in the ring to gain this, this young man's services. Also, uh, Toby Jackson, a, a defensive tackle, junior college from Hutchinson Junior College, about 6'4", uh, 290 pounds, was just offered a scholarship in the last two days, as well as Priest Willis uh, from Tucson, Arizona, a defensive back, about 6'2", 198, with about 4'4", speed, everyone in the country is uh, throwing their hat in the ring for this young man. Uh, uh, a little side note on Toby, uh, he's originally from College Park, Georgia, went to Vanderbilt High School, uh, makes a lot of plays. This young man is getting recruited by Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, Minnesota, uh, just to name a few schools that, that are trying to garner this young man's attention. I, I believe Florida's going to get in the mix. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a really good 2013 recruiting year, uh, as I've stated before on our big, big show. Arkansas is in on some high quality football players. And that's just you know tribute to coach, you know, the exposure that this program has been getting ever since he's been here for you know, since his first year. It's only gonna get better, but just a couple of notes on the recruiting from uh, that we want to share with you guys. Well, we're gonna go ahead and close the show out. Uh, but uh, Boris Ness has gotten busy and uh, she can't 
can't get over here to talk about it. We'll get her another time, Patty. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, again, thank you to Jenkins, USA Computers, uh, Horse Nest Barbecue, uh, CNE Locksmith, Now That's Cooking.com, some of our supporters, uh, and sponsors. And uh, we're going to sign off for now and uh, enjoy this weekend's baseball. If you have any questions that you might want to leave, you can email us, comments, uh, Facebook us. We're on Twitter at SueyNation.com. That's S O O I E E. Uh, Travis and I will, you know, do the best we can to come up with that information. Uh, Even if it's just to say, hey, Travis, you suck. <laughs> You know, anything counts. You know, anything counts. Any kind of comment is welcome. Uh, Y'all have a good weekend. We'll see you out on the baseball.